Uh, my name is Chris Grunner and I'm the President and Executive Director of the Kelly Hines Grunner Brain Tumor Foundation, which I started in memory of my wife, Kelly, who unfortunately passed away from a brain tumor at the age of 31 and uh, that was in September of 2004 that she passed away and at that time I was a senior vice president with JP Morgan Chase but I realized uh, I couldn't do that anymore like my sort of my whole life was sort of turned upside down and everything that I uh, felt was important up until that point in my life uh, wasn't really important anymore and so I really felt like I needed to go back and redefine myself and uh, sort of spent a lot of time praying and asking for God's guidance in my life and I realized that there were a lot of people who were doomed to suffer the same fate Kelly suffered uh, with her brain tumor and uh, that someone uh, with my skill sets needed to do something, step up and try to help, uh, help other people. So, um, you know, basically it was the one thing that I was passionate about was the fact that my wife passed away at the age of 31 from a brain tumor. And, and in her case, she went undiagnosed for a significant period of time because we were uneducated about the disease. And sadly, her, brain, her uh, primary care physician was also uneducated about the disease. So. Um, I really felt like there was a lot of work that needed to be done in the area of awareness and education. And there were a lot of great groups doing research on brain tumors and uh, helping patients, but no one was really doing anything on the front end to help people get diagnosed earlier. And so that's really the area that I wanted to focus on, and that was the genesis of the Kelly Hines Center Brain Tumor Foundation. In 2002, when she was diagnosed, everything in her life was going great. You know, we. Uh, she was working hard as a catering manager. She loved her job. Um, I was climbing the corporate ladder. I was one of the youngest senior vice presidents ever at J.P. Morgan Chase, and and things were going really well for us. And that all kind of came to a screeching halt when she was diagnosed. And uh, unfortunately, she went through a period of about six months where she was experiencing these symptoms, um, and we were unaware. You know, we just weren't un uneducated. And I think the other mistake we made was that we. We deferred to the doctor, and, and, and it's amazing because in any, in any other area in our life, we never did that. Like if we were buying a car, we would go to the internet and do our research and consumer reports. We'd, we'd research the invoice price and find out exactly what the dealer was paying, and if we weren't getting what we wanted, we'd go to another dealer. Um, with the doctor, we sort of just said, you know, they're the doctor, and, and so she went through, you know, they thought it was um, seasonal allergies and tried this medication and thought, well, maybe it was migraines and stress from work. And, they went through all these different things before they even considered a brain tumor and it wasn't until we actually had done our research and went in and demanded an MRI that they ordered an MRI and a, and a week later we found out that's when we found out she had a golf ball sized tumor in the center of her brain. We were in a, in a lot of ways um, isolated. Her family was in Michigan, my family was back in Buffalo. Um, they certainly came a lot and made trips a lot to see us. Um, uh, but what was really neat was we had a lot of uh, friends who became family here and um, she had an awesome group of friends that would come to visit her in the hospital or come to the house. I had a, 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 an equally good group of people that would come and support us and so we sort of created our own family in a way right here in the community and, and I, I just, you know, we'll I'll always be thankful to those folks who, who came and helped us. They either the cooking meals or coming and uh, taking our dogs for a walk so we didn't so I didn't have to do that and just trying to take things off our plate to help us out and I see that so much with all the other families here in town too. Um, Delaware is just a really great community and, and people want to help each other and so I see a lot of these families who are struggling but I also see a good thing coming out of it because the community kind of comes and, and gets involved and, and I, I just um, I think we were really blessed by that you know we were really blessed by that. I know she's smiling down. I mean, you know, she, um, you know, she's very much a part of it on a daily basis. Um, you know, the the the, uh, the dragonfly, which is our logo, is really a tribute to her. Um, and the symbolism behind a dragonfly is light, adaptability, and change. And you know, anybody who met Kelly knew, you know, loved her. And she was the type of person that would light up a room when she came in. And and even after she was diagnosed and she was in her wheelchair and she was in this really bad you know, physical position, she was still the light. You know, she would come into the room and just the room would light up and people just would fall in love with her. So that was the first thing. The adaptability, of course, was, you know, taking what life deals to you. You know, she would say, you know, the only thing in life I can control is my attitude. And you gotta play the cards that, you know, God deals to you. And so for, for her, she didn't sit around and complain about it. She still, her motto was live, laugh, love, and she still th did it on a daily basis. And so I learned a lot from that, and you know, that's what I'm trying to do now is, is continue to, do, to carry that cross forward. 
And the third thing was transformation, of course. And the story, the story of a water bug, and if you're interested, is water bugs, you know, eventually will crawl out of the water and onto like a lily pad or something. And once they're sort of uh, in the light, in the sunlight, they transform and turn into a dragonfly. So in, in, in a similar way to what a butterfly goes through. Um, but what story, the Native American story, was there were all these water bugs and they're all kind of gathered around. And, and in the water, all they knew is that when another water bug left the water, they never came back. And so it was like the, the water bugs would talk to, amongst themselves and say, don't ever leave the water, it's a really bad thing, it's really scary, it's, it, it, you never return. But at some point in every water bug's life, they're just drawn, they have to leave, they have to go and see what's out there. And of course, you know, you find out that there's a transformation that takes place and they, they become even more beautiful and, and, and more special. And we of course believe the same thing happens here on Earth, is that at some point we're all called to leave, but it's just a transformation and uh, it's a more beautiful, you're going to a more beautiful place. And so I really feel like she's still with us in many ways and I know she's really smiling down on, on what we're doing.